In this two-part video series, I'm going to explain to you how to draw an architectural elevation. Now, in the previous video, we had drawn this elevation over here, in which we have to complete a few works, publish and plot it, and also have to trim these long lines. Now, before we continue, I just like to say that if you if you like the contents of this video and this channel, please like and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments or if you have any other queries, please let me know via comments. So let's begin. Okay. So the first thing that we will do is bring all bring back all of our ribbons that are that are not they are currently. So for that one, I just did a control uh, control zero for clean screen. And I'll just bring back my ribbon. Then I'll bring back my command line by doing control nine. Now, as you can see that there's a file tab indicator on top here that is missing. So that is, that is very easily fixable. You can type OP for options and press enter. Then you click on display and you click on file tabs. Check, ensure that this is checked. When you click apply, then you click apply. And you can see that that has come on now. And then click on OK. OK, since these lines are too small, what we will do is we'll need to trim them. So we'll go to the page where we have set up our elevations. Well, I hadn't set it up, but I'll set it up roughly now, just to get an idea of the scale that I want to use. And for this exercise, we'll be using a scale of 1 is to 80. Then what I'll do is simply type XL for construction line. Then just select a point where I think the lines are consistent with this side or you can keep it short and then I'll just select all this is the cutting plane and this is the cutting object then I'll type TR for trim then press enter click one side let go of the mouse come up diagonally and then click on the other side let go of the mouse delete this line and you can maybe center this now if you think that 1 is to 80 is too small for you you can change it to a separate different scale we can say 1 is to 60 and I think yeah, 1 is to 60 would be the best scale for this. So everything that we make has to be in 1 is to 60. So simply we'll just come back here and we'll reflect it to all this, all these text because they went missing as soon as I did uh, 1 is to 60. type ESC and that should that should do the trick then we'll also change this to 1 is to 60 those are the reduced level indicators so the first thing that I'll do is I'll remove the grids temporarily I won't switch them off I'll remove them I'll remove the paint and I'll just move them up with the coordinates and I'll just simply select and I'll see which one is right. So in this case, I can do 6500, press enter. Remember that value. If you forget it, then you'll have to realign everything with the reference. Okay. The next thing that I'll do is simply move this line back temporarily and then expose my floor level. Then I'll do an offset of 50 mm. And then bring it up, bring it downwards. Now this is the floor level of my porch. Now I intend to have my porch to the full length, to the full width of this building, which is 7.5 meters. So I'll leave it to that. Do not confuse your line. This is the finished floor level and this is 50 mm to prevent water entering into the building. Or you can also put this as 100 mm, completely up to you. Okay, the next thing that we need to draw is the roof. So from here we'll offset 2.4. And then you trace where your lines are. And you, as you can see that the lines are up here. So anything that we draw, any like the ceiling height is going to be 2.4. The FISA boards will be slightly lower than this. So what we'll do is simply bring these two, bring this line outwards. Or you can just do an extension of 600 mm because that is the overhang of my line.
Now you might be seeing that I'm not really explaining much about the commands anymore because I've already explained it multiple times. And if you wish to understand what I'm saying, you can also follow the how to set up AutoCAD for two dimensional drafting video trails. So as we can see, that that roof will start to encroach onto the top roof. So that is not a good practice. So what I'll do is simply, I'll just move my flow levels down by at least 100 mm. So we'll have 150 mm step over here, which will be covered with the plaster and the flow tiles to make it approximately 100. Now that I've drawn my roof line, do not worry about these sticks. We can move them down as well. Once we, once we are done with the drawings. So now that we have drawn the roof line, we'll do an offset and we'll type 150 mm and press enter. And that is your height of the facade board. Or facade as most people like to use it in a complicated language. And what we'll do is simply join these lines. And we'll do the similar one here. Now the next thing that I need to do, since this is this has a span of 7.5 meter, what I'll need to do is put some kind of posts over here. So what I'll do is I'll do a construction line XL. Remember I've already consulted my engineer about this. You can also do the same while you are doing your drawings. So I can put a 200 mm RC column all the way through. like so. So I'll put three columns. That's one. That's two. And let's put the third one. Which is three. As you can see that the porch roof has now started to take its shape. So you can either move it out and draw it, hatch it, or you can hatch it in there accordingly. But I'll just move it out to make it easy. Now I'll also need to change the layer for this. This one will go to the uh, timber layer. Any kind of timber or woodwork that I'm doing, I put it into that layer. And these are all concrete columns. So you can leave it on concrete wall or you can change it to concrete column. Completely up to you. I'll leave it to that for the time being. Now what I'll do is I'll do a hedge, hedge for hedge. Then I'll match it with match the color of the face at this face board with this face board. So to do that, to do the hedge, type hedge for hedge and press enter. Then type settings. Click on inherit properties. And you can inherit the properties from there. And click it in there. Now for the column, what I have done is I'm going to allow a feature tile, feature wall tile on this. So I'll show that in another video how we can do the external referencing. But you can also use the hatches that are currently available over here. So for this exercise, I'll put that hatch over here temporarily. And then I'll show you in the another video what I will know how to how I'll make it look realistic. Remember, you just have to do one 
and you have to copy the rest but do not copy blindly be careful because one small mistake will create a big difference in your drafting work so now that we have done that what i'll do next is create a reference line over there do an offset of 50 mm then i'll create another x line over here offset it at a distance of 600 mm then i'll offset the, the, that line to a distance of 700 mm now this is an offset this will have a railing here this will also have a set of railings over here what i'll do now is i'll type the railing height and enter so that should be 900 mm then what i'll do is i'll draw one rectangle of 50 mm by offsetting this then type rec for rectangle and create a rectangle click on one corner and then click on the other diagonal corner and you can delete this then you can simply copy this down and paste it over here like so once that is done you can delete this line and you can also delete this line or you can leave it there temporarily now what i am saying is i am using a railing railing top rails that has a width of 50 mm diameter and it should be a c grade with a thick internal wall lining so i'm using 50 you can also use 40 or we'll just make it 40 for now because 50 mm will be a bit expensive then i'll type another construction line i mean i'll draw another rectangle that is 900 mm long by 20 mm press enter rotate this using ro for rotate click on one point drag it to your right there you go then i'll move this over here like so and then whatever the adjustments are there i can do that accordingly so this is the top rails this is the blur straight rails so we can move this one 100 mm away and remember if you have a baby in the house try to keep this distance to a minimum of uh, 100 mm and below then i'll just copy one and paste it there like so two and three then i'll copy all these click on this point and paste it there and keep on going accordingly so one will make two two will make four four will make six You just have to keep your referencing points proper. There we go. Now we'll change all these to a standard layer. <coughs> and I'll put it to pipe outline. Then I'll select a color for this. In this case, I'd like to use it, put it to an Indian red color. Just click on that and change to solid. Don't need to do another hedge. Select this, copy, and paste it over here. If your tiles, if your hedge is above, is covering the outlines, like so. Click on this, type DR for draw order, then select back. Now similarly type H, H for H again. Then click on settings, click on inherit properties, click on this. And do that. Then you can just copy that to all. Now this was my mistake, I could have drawn one and copied uh, multiple times. But I did not do that, so you guys can be a bit careful.
I seem to have made a mistake, so let me just rectify it. If you don't do, if you don't do one and then copy to the rest, this is the problem that you'll have to face. Waste your time and do it again. And if you make a mistake, you'll have to delete it and keep on going. Then if you again if your hedges are covering the line, just select click on one, select similar, deselect whichever one that should not be selected by holding down shift and then selecting the ones selecting the unnecessary ones. Type DR and press enter and send them all back there you go now you have a nice and consistent hand railing so what you can do next is select all this copy and paste this over here like so then you can delete the unnecessary hatches simply bring it edit it up edit it and just bring it up and fix it there like so and similarly with this one you can do the same now the best practice for these kind of works is to simply just select them all and group them so that you don't select one and make an error out of it Now at times when you group it will cover up so what cover up the lines so what you can do is type re for regenerate and press enter and it will bring back all your lines similarly you can move this one out like so and put this over here now what you can what you'll need to do is put a post here so simply do an offset of 40 mm and press enter and there you go similarly there you go <coughs> This you can put a steam elbow over here and cover it, but I'll leave it like that for now because this will not actually show up in the main architectural plan. A welder will see and know that he, what he has to do. Type H for H and H it on. Then just select this, copy, and paste it there like so. And delete this then what you can do is simply select all your gate members and just group them again so that they have one solid union in it now the next thing that we can do is simply take, take this select all of these because we have drawn a reference line here click and just move them down like so then we can ungroup this And then type TR for trim and just trim off the unnecessary things. There are several ways that you can do fast work in, in AutoCAD and always have time and always be able to prepare drawings on time. If these come up and region does not work, you'll have to select all of these edges and just move them back. Then just close up these lines. You can also delete this if you want. Or I'll just close up this line. Now the best thing about the join command 
is that if you select this line first and then you select this line later and when you type j for enter then do join it will automatically change the color like so so the best thing to do if you don't wish to change this color to this is you first you select the color that you wish to remain then you select the color that you wish to join and type j and then press enter and it will match it accordingly so you don't have to do a match proper you don't have to do unnecessary uh what do you say this? how do you, do you say this unnecessary setting and changes simply select this type g for group then press enter and then just copy this and move it up i'll show you why i did a copy We'll create the gate now and we'll type off offset press enter and distance of 40 and do an insert like so then we'll ungroup this then we'll just select all these co for copy type co for copy then press enter click it on this base point and just paste it over there like so now if you see that there's a little bit of gap what you can do is you can cheat it out a little bit and you can select all type m press enter m for move then type m to p for mirror to point click on this line click on this end click on this end then m to p again click on this end and click on this end to make it look consistent now i'll just match my layer to this then i'll do the hatching accordingly And then I'll move it all back. I'll just group this up and then move it up to where it should be. There you go. Now we'll delete this line. We'll select all these and we'll group this all again and just move them back into its place. There you go now this line you can delete this polyline because it's completely unnecessary when you have this call out over here that is actually showing you where your lines are now what i'll do is simply select this and move this down and i'll add the text to it to be known as a minus 50 minus 150 mm of from finished flow level so that's ffl remember this is ffl Let's finish flow level. Finish flow level minus 0 0.05 of a meter 50 mm is equals to porch. Finish flow level. So it should not be minus, it should be it should not be uh, 50 it should be 150 mm as i just showed you right so now that you can see that your elevation has taken its shape and what you can do is simply take all these texts if you think that they are uh, blocking blocking they're being blocked and type br for draw order press enter then click move them up to front So like I said, now there's more than enough gap over here for your building construction to proceed. And what you can do is simply click on this and just bring this down over here like so. If that does not happen, you can select one of your corners and move it down. Now what we'll do is simply move all these the things that we had moved away down back to its place. And just move these back and there you go now that you can see 
that it's all been drawn out properly your elevations are shown properly everything else is picking up properly as well what you can do is simply select all of these if they are uh, overlapping and then move them back so that the elevation shows up neatly then what we can do is type rec for rectangle from there two points type pl for polyline and you can use the building code of fiji's step page on how to construct the step page and then you can set up your uh, step threads in this case i'll just do 150 mm there you go then i'll just make the hand railings here roughly remember all these will have separate details but you can just show them roughly on your architectural elevations move these ones out to 40 mm do another 40 i mean uh, like so keep it 40 from the edge then we'll mirror it to the other side and there you go now that we have completed drafting of the uh, architectural elevations what we will do is we'll publish we'll plot this and uh, what you can do is simply unlock your viewport go to the location where you have drawn your architectural uh, elevation <clears throat> then you select your scale that you had set up earlier if it has moved out from its place so in the, in my case i had selected the scale of 1 is 260 and i'll just simply adjust it into place and there you go now the only thing that is pending over here now are these keys such as number 11 it shows you a, some kind of a flashing this 150 mm standard flashing which i'll be doing in the next video on how to create this long elevation and uh, if you like this uh, if you like the contents of this video please like and subscribe to my channel and let me know if you have any queries via comments thank you very much